I'm Doug Moser. I went to Newton High School in uh, Lakeland and graduated from Eastern Illinois University. I played uh, all the sports, I guess, in football. I was four year, played four years in football, played uh, all four years in basketball. Uh, in track, I was a three year track guy. And in my last the senior year, I played baseball. So I got to play the four sports, got eight letters when I was in high school, um, all conference and all three. So it was, a good time. I really enjoyed it. We had, uh, as far as team success, didn't have as much as you know would have liked to had. Um, was able to have some great teammates though, and great memories. Uh, all you have to do is go to class reunions, and you can figure out all the fine time you had. So, um, football was a special time at, for me in in high school. Enjoyed it. Um, you think basketball was you know every, but I really enjoyed football. It's something you never get to do again. So you know. I played on better basketball teams after I got out of high school than I did when I was in high school. But you never get to play football again, so that was that was something that's very special. And, and our community football was was uh, very important for all of us. So enjoyed that basketball. I uh, played varsity as a, a junior. Got hurt my senior year of football, last football game. Broke my ankle. So or of my uh, junior year. And so I missed most of my junior year in basketball. Uh, probably motivated me to be a lot better player after that because it kind of got it taken away. Um, was all conference in track for two years, pole vaulted. Uh, that's all I did, didn't run, just pole vault. And uh, so I, we kind of started that where all the Moser seemed to like to pole vault. We, I did it first and it was kind of enjoyable. And my height was like, small compared to what those guys do now but it was uh it was a st school record for 20 years so i guess i'd be proud of that and then my senior year i played uh, baseball so uh, we couldn't do both back in those days didn't have a chance to do both things so i decided to play uh, baseball and i really liked the team concept team things and get to be with the guys and it was uh, very enjoyable Doug, apparently you were a tremendous fast pitch softball player, according to my uncle Mark Reppin. Um <laughs> Talk about when you started playing and kind of talk, just explaining about that. Mm -hmm. uh, I got we started playing pretty much right after high school. Um, my friend Julidi and I decided, to, you know, the local team here, Grove mostly, were saying, "Hey, you're going to play with us next year. Want you to play in a Labor Day tournament?" And they allowed us to go over and play at Palestine at Labor Day tournament. And, Put us out there and of course i was just coming off of baseball so they put me in center field and first thing they did when the ball came to me i hit it and i threw it almost over the whole stand because <laughs> everything was so much tighter than what you're used to doing but uh, you know i got the hang of it it was really enjoyable it's a quick game uh of course obviously in t-town you know having the leagues and all the teams around the areas it's just so much different it was so much different then as far as you know you go to a lot of small towns and play play ball and a lot of good players so uh, it played all the way through college and kind of improved the teams as, as we went and, uh, you know, kind of challenged myself to try to play more and more different teams. I played with, started with Bobbers and played with a lot of local guys. Uh, DJs was probably the veteran better team. Jerry Trigg called me, said, hey, you want to come play with us? I was, yeah. So I came over and played them and it was very, uh, very supportive, allowed me to kind of grow and get better and then when TA start or excuse me, yeah, TA started their team, I went with them. And this kind of DJs kind of evolved into that group. And then of course we from TA we evolved into boss. And so it was I had played about 15 years, enjoyed it. It was uh, I don't know how much my wife did, but I really enjoyed it. And uh, had made a lot of good friends and uh, played a lot of competition. So what was the best team that you were ever on? Um I was lucky enough to play on a lot of good teams. It, you know, the level kind of changed over the years. And in 87, we were, uh, for TA, we had a really good team. We were class A. And, you know, then it was, you were classified as A. And then if you got better, like the pride and things like that were 2A. So we were, we were pretty good. And we went through T-Town Regional, won that, went to the state, got third in the state that year. I think we were 70 and 14 it was ridiculous how many games we played but uh, it was it was very fun went, went to the midwest regional in highland indiana and 
that's the only way we would make it to the nationals. And we won that tournament. Uh, Mike Connolly hit a sacrifice fly. We ended up winning the game. And uh, we played a national tournament in California that year. And I, my daughter was going to be born that <laughs> that time and uh, I made the decision that I wasn't going to go because of that. So I didn't go to that tournament, national tournament in, uh, in California. And uh, of course, I don't think we were going to win anyway, but uh, so enjoyed that. That's a great team. But then we got better. We got, as we went to the double A, uh, we had, you know, really good teams. When Alan Meinhardt was pitching, uh, you were on a better team than most people. So uh, we had a really good group, had uh, Jeff Stacer, you know, Mike McCollum, we had Dick Mahaffey, we had Mark Steppe. We had a, you know, we, I want to say we're all-stars, but we had a lot of good people around and we had from some of the better teams, you know, Gene Zeruzan came and played for us and fantastic, you know, usually you think of him playing for the T-Town teams. Well, he came to us. So that was nice. And, and he really, you know, was, was fantastic. And we, we had a great time, had a bunch of great players. It was one of those things where really we had success and uh, I really liked being a part of that and uh, felt that those were probably the best teams. We went to two national, or I guess three national tournaments and uh, we ended up, one was in Decatur, one was in Bloomington, one was in Mankato, Minnesota. And that was, that was one of the la later ones. And um, after that, I, you know, had done things that I wanted to do. I didn't really want to keep traveling like I was going to keep traveling for the, and you had to, because if you were double A, you couldn't go play as areas teams as much. You know, you'd, you'd be going to Bloomington on Wednesdays, you'd be traveling to everywhere on the weekends and it just got too much, but uh, very fun. Who was the best player you played with or against? Um, very hard to say, uh, you know, when I flirt, far as played with because there were so many good guys uh, that I could name. Pitching-wise, you know, Alan Meinhardt was the best pitcher that I've ever played with. He was uh, he was just a dominant player, dominant, you know, keep you in the game no matter what. And against a lot of local teams, you're like, well, do we need to go out there? Because he could just, you know, throw it by you if he wanted to. Um, I have a lot of friends that they would be you now – Politic and to see who I would say is the best player. So I don't, I don't know who best player would be that I played with. Uh, played with a lot of great guys, but the uh, play against, you know, Rothrock was probably the best. Uh, he was, you know, he was in a different class as far as hitter. He he was the one that you got nervous when you had to play infield. You know, you you didn't want to play infield when he was batting. <laughs> And so I, I usually played center field. I felt safe there. But if when they made me play first, I didn't like it. When he would come up to bat, he's left hand, and he's I'm, I'm looking and going. <laughs> I, I back up. I gave a lot of room. But there was a you know we had that was the fun part of the, the challenges. Um, I'd go up to you know you go up and watch play the Decatur Pride. You may yeah, you get a few hits and feel really great, or you go for six and strike out a bunch. So I it's it's it was just a, a great great challenge for that for and and as you got older you got to see so many players you know we traveled around and did so many things I mean Darren Zach was a pitcher that we got up he was from Seattle and he was just basically I never I've never seen anything like it as far as I'm I'm a very experienced player and all of a sudden I, I we're not touching it you know and and when you're younger uh, we went up to S and K, Arcola S and K rigging. When I first started playing, they had won the nationals in Class A, and Rich Tillett was a pitcher. <laughs> I I swear I I got up to bat and he hit me in the side of the hip, and Fred Jansen was on deck and he goes, well, "What did you see?" And I go, "I didn't see much. <laughs> I didn't see it all. <laughs> all of a sudden it was out of his hand and it hit me. So I was <laughs> and so it it you know you got better at it as you yeah. went. And so but uh, great players. I like I said. We had a very, for a Class A team, local team, that we didn't do any recruiting as far as around. There was no one, I mean, Alan Meinhardt lives three miles from me, you know, as far as grew up. Um, it, it was a, it was very special. We go to those tournaments and you'd see all kinds of teams that have players from all over the country and it'd just be a bunch of us guys close to Effingham and, it, and we could compete. And that was, that was, that was special.
Um, well, obviously through the years, you know, we won a lot of tournaments and a lot of things. So obviously I won some, you know, most valuables around the tournaments, which was fine. And, uh, but you know, I was lucky enough in 2019 to get elected to the hall of fame for softball. And that was, uh, very honoring the, uh, you know, Gene's reason had got in the year before, and uh, I think he had a lot of, you know, influence. He's, you know, he's a car salesman. He can he can talk people into it. He got me in, so I don't I don't know. But I was I talked to Jerry Stewart one night. And he would talk to me after coaching a basketball game. He's like, you know, how come you're you're not in? I'm like, well, I don't make those decisions. <laughs> so, uh, but they, you know, I think Gene nominated me and I think that they voted. And so I was very humbled by it. And I was, uh, you know, something you can't take away. Obviously there's a lot of players in the area that would, you know, deserve to be in the hall of fame. I think um, our team got in the year before. So it was a good situation when Gene got in. And then for me to get in the next year was, was very, uh, very, very nice. When did you start coaching and what level? Mm -hmm. uh, when I got out of college, I got a job at St. Anthony High School and uh, was going to do the freshman basketball. And of course I was a girls track coach, which I was a terrible track coach. And there was a, I, I coached under Les Stevens and Dave Bartlett was there. And so I started off and obviously uh, great guys there at St. Anthony, um, I'm sure they thought I was a tyrant because you know, you come out of college, you're thinking everybody can play like, like you were in college. And, and so it was a little different, but uh, enjoyed it, had a good time there. And I, I then stayed there one year, uh, went to new, a job at Newton Central came open for their uh, junior high coaching and teach sixth grade. So I took that job and got there one year. Yeah, we had a riff situation, so I was looking for another job. Bill McLean from Diedrich talked to me and said, hey, how about coming over and do science? And uh, so they sent me back to school. Um, I went to school as I was doing it, and did the science department at Diedrich, coached the junior high for eight years, uh, had a great experience. Mike McCollum was, was the head varsity coach at that time. And, you know, I could just steal everything. He was like an open sponge. You could just sponge off him as much as you could. And he was, uh, he was a, a great coach, great offensive coach. Um, I ran a lot, all of his stuff. I still did till the end of coaching. So um, had a, I think the kids at Diedrich had a great work ethic. They, you could be hard on them. You could push them. Um, the, it was important for them. So we had some success there. Uh, got a first place in the state one year with seventh graders and they came back in eighth years, got second. Uh, a few years later, uh, we got a team up there, got third place, um, had played, you know, had girls on, Susie Warman played, she was, they didn't have a girls sport, or didn't have a girls basketball program, so Susie played on the, the boys team, and uh, so then more girls came out, I, I said, oh, I'm not treat you, I treat them like players, and they, they you know, I pushed them, and, and, but I had a very enjoyable time there, eight years, and then uh, the Newton job, he came up in 91, uh, 92, and uh, Wendell Wheeler was the head coach. I and I talked to Mr. Hout and Mr. Kearns, and they said, you know, I come over and you know go back to your hometown. I didn't know about that, but of course, living here, I was in the district, and so I uh, went back and was going to be JV coach, and I was happy Wendell Wheeler was was the head coach. I was very going to be happy doing that. And, and he left, and so when he left, it was kind of it was open. I uh, we had won the regional as the year before, and uh, but we knew we weren't going to have a real good squad on the next year, and it was kind of tough. Started off one and twenty three, <laughs> the first year of coaching, and when you do that, you you know I've had success before, and all of a sudden, you find out that maybe you don't know very much, and you you know you start figuring out everything you can do to try to get better as a group, and. I was there for, um, I was head varsity basketball coach for 21 years at Newton. And uh, took a break when my son Nick was going through uh, 
seventh and eighth grade, and then uh, as a freshman sophomore, I didn't coach him. I coached, didn't coach varsity basketball then, and I got my master's degree and so on. And then when uh, Dave Gillingham left, um, there was an opening, and my son was a junior, and I had a, a group of kids. I had been coaching football, help with football, so I knew that the, that group and and uh, decided to come back. And then I was there until the end of my career. So, what person had the biggest influence on your coaching career? Okay, uh, coaching probably would be you know Mike McCollum was a very big influence because when I just started, he was the varsity coach, and so. He allowed me to do a lot of things with the varsity to try to get me prepared. Uh, once I became a varsity coach in uh, at Newton, you know Bob Horst was very. He was the AD at the time. Um, I'm this younger guy, and he's veteran, and uh, you know he kind of kept me in my place as far as you know a little calmer. I probably have a little <laughs> bit more intensity sometimes uh, than I should. So uh, you know, I remember after games he would talk to me in the mornings he would talk to me and 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 it was it, it helped me to grow a lot as a person as a as a coach um, so those those two guys were very important and uh, obviously when you're coaching against people you know Ron Reed Flanagan from uh, gosh we stole so many things from each other so you know all these years Ron Reed and I would talk a lot and uh, we complain a lot so we, we, would, we ran a lot of the same things because, you know, once you got beat by them, you say, hey, what can I steal? What can I get from them? And so uh, we, we learned to do some, you know, take the good things and, and, you know, from the scouting things, those guys were just so good and I tried to take as much as possible. Coach, Coach Crawford was very important to me as far as when I first started, like I said, Mike was a, McCollum was a offensive coach. He always believed that, you know, I'm gonna work on offense, you know, a, a, 75 80 percent of the time and so when i started i did that a lot more because i wanted my guys to run the stuff and do things and talk to coach crawford he was always you know defensively he believed in spending more time doing that now i agree that you still got to be able to score points you know <laughs> sometimes i worked on those things to try to get score points but i think coach had a lot of guys that could score points so defensively and i noticed when my better teams i had guys that could score i used to have teach them play defense so i think i grew a little bit more as i got older to say the defense and, and rebounding was a little more important notable teams that you have coached um well obviously i had a lot of teams that i, I really you know, enjoyed um, everybody has a special part, you know, special group. The the team that was uh, what Troy was on, the, the, the team that in uh, 98, 99, 99, 2000 were a good group. They were, uh, you know, I was a younger guy then. They, they were spending a lot of time together as far as getting yourself prepared. We came from, you know, like I said, when you, we start, I guess it a little bit how it starts off. You start off with a team of one and 23, and those kids were freshmen at that particular time. So they kind of got pushed up a little bit more in their play. But as juniors, they had success. And then as seniors, they were 25 and three. We got beat by uh, St. Anthony in the regional final. Um, was a tough loss, probably one of the toughest losses we've had because of the kids, the much time and work they put in. They beat St. Anthony earlier in the year and uh, at our place and we had played we'd lost three we lost three games we lost to Louisville we lost to T-Town and we lost to uh, St. Anthony well then we in the regional we played to Louisville for the first game and we beat them and then we played T-Town and we beat them uh, and then that was Tuesday Thursday and then we had to play St. Anthony on Friday and you know once you come off of a beating T-Town it's kind of hard for the next night to get ready to go and play again and this group never got tired, but I fell after that game. You know, we, we were even up against Santa first right away. And then, you know, we call timeout and, you know, they're kind of grabbing their shorts a little bit. And I don't know, that's just not, they don't usually get tired. And so I think mentally we wore, and then it kind of seemed, because I think St. Anthony lost the next game at, you know, against Carmine. And, and that's the, one of the few times I went to the state tournament and said, you know, we probably could have done well here. And so that was that was a that was a good group. And then of course the the next year we end up winning the regional with uh, probably a less talented group, but 
Matt Meinhardt was on that, Goble, and, and uh, that, that was it was a you know a good span there. And then when I came back from um, after I got done with my four years of being off, uh, had a group of seniors that you know, football they had tremendous success, probably the most talented team we've had, um, and uh, you know we won the conference. We won the conference. Uh, and in the Apollo, that's pretty good when you go do that. Oh, yeah. You're playing those big schools. You're playing them. You're playing them twice, and you're doing those things. So we were able to win the conference, and then uh, we went into the regional at T Town, and that was Coach Cropper's last year, and uh, they beat us at the end, and uh, had a had a good run. So it, it we didn't probably have as many postseason things as we'd like, but uh, those are you know sometimes you get fortunate, sometimes you don't. Probably some of my favorite players were not the, the stars that you'd think about because of uh, the toughness that some of them had and some of the special teams you had. Uh, so I think they all have that. I, I don't think that I treated everybody the same. I tried to, you know, I tried to treat them fairly. I tried to treat. Sometimes uh, certain kids they they did better with with uh, criticism, and some did better when you pushed them to to be a little better. So. I enjoyed it, doing it with all the kids. My favorite was, of course, my son because uh, you know he had to take a lot as a coach. And I remember that uh, you know Levi Richards told one time he said to Nick, he was, "I sure like having you on my team because your dad's on you a lot more than he's on all of us." So I, I agree with that. <laughs> and, uh, so I, you know, he was very enjoyable. Having, I was lucky enough to have a you know a lot of nephews that coached my nephews, and they were you know Scott and Brock were. Mitch were there, and um, so those were enjoyable. Uh, you know, Peyton Wyatt was was a very special player. Um, I thought Luke Stone was a very special player. So those those guys were just leaders as well as being your best player, and you know that's some things you don't you don't see uh, too often when you have that guy that's I'm the best player, but I I want to work hard. I want to be you know keep pushing other people and the other people follow so that was a good group and then of course Jared Jones probably was my if I had to do he's probably my favorite he's he's one of those uh I've never seen a kid work harder I've never seen a kid get the most out of his ability like he was able to do um I was very close to him he grew up right over here and I take him in a lot of times and uh, drive around to help him get there and his mom was you know by herself and boy she did a great job with him and I, uh, he was one of the first ones because obviously he plays as a sophomore uh, and junior senior. He was the leading scorer for our school for a long time until Peyton beat it. And uh, he never shot anything outside of his range. You know, a lot of guys, you'd always see him as soon as he had time, they were out there shooting half court, half this. Not him. He'd be right in his plane, right in the lane, just shooting it, making it. And, and that, you know, he was probably the one that got the most out. Uh, Matt Meinhart probably might have been the best player uh, as far as being able to uh, do anything he wanted to do on the court. So uh, those were some special players and uh, really enjoyed it. And, and again, hard workers and great kids. What it meant to coach Levi Richards? Well, Levi was a uh, unbelievable athlete, very smart athlete. Um, you know, I didn't get to coach him in the sense of uh, basketball. I coached him in football, which was great. You know, as far as able to do receivers and get along and and uh, was allowed to do it. But the one year that I did get to coach him, you basically I I knew that he was a football player first, track guy. Uh, if we get him to play basketball, he played basketball his junior or his uh, freshman sophomore year, and then he was not playing his junior year. Senior year, he decided to come out, and uh, so I was just trying to get as much as we could out of him. And didn't you know? I was probably a little too nice for a while to him. You know, 
And then, uh, you know, the more you challenged him, the more he took, the more he was able to elevate his game. He had a, you know, a, a very memorable, memorable game in his final game at T-Town. I mean, he basically almost single-handedly won the game. Um, it was fantastic. So he, what's special about him was he was, uh, again, a very good combination of being a very smart athlete with uh, unbelievable talent. What it meant to coach Nick Cohorse and Zach Jansen? Well, I'm glad that they politic to get on your interview. That's that's a yeah. It doesn't surprise me a bit. So the uh, I Zach, Zach Jansen. We start off with him because Zach was one of those guys that uh, I could push him and and get on him to get you know to do these things. He was one of the guys on our team that did a little bit of everything. You know, we needed him in the post. We needed him to be able to play defense. He had more energy than most people do. You know, he he just uh, just did an outstanding job, especially his senior year, as far as doing everything that team needed. And uh, I thought that that was that was his key part of our team. That that you know he he added the intensity. He added the uh, the fire to that group. Um, Nick Cohorse was one of the most talented people that that we've had, you know that I coached. He could, he by far the best dunker I've ever had, that's for sure. Uh, he could do it any way, shape, or form as far as putting the ball down. And and during a game, you know, breakaway, I never had anybody, any player ever that would be like, oh, there's, he had two or three dunks today. You know, you just, so he, he, we asked a lot out of Nick, and he really delivered his senior year, had a great senior year. Um, went on and showed the, you know, his fire to play college the way he did. He's did a great job. And uh, so I really enjoyed that, those two guys. Um, of course, you know, Nick's my neighbor. I can't really ever say anything bad about Nick. I mean, he's, he'll come back down here and see me. So uh, now, but it was a great, it, he, he was one of those guys that was very quiet, didn't, you know, he would, if you're trying to get him to be a rah-rah guy, he's not going to talk to you. He's not going to do it. So that's what Zach, you know, they, that's what it was a compliment with those guys. And, uh, but that was a very close group. They, uh, they knew it was my last year. They, they uh, gave me a very nice send off with uh, the type of team and type of group that they were. Obviously, through the years, I had a lot of assistant coaches. You know, some some places you you kind of have that same guy all the time. I, I really didn't wasn't fortunate enough to have that. Um, you know, Coach Horst helped me some because I, I was going to help with football, and he said, "Hey, I'll come and help a few years with with basketball." And and uh, that was that was a good good time when uh, him and I got to coach together. Um, then my former players came back. You know, Josh Beverlin was one that played for me in 2001, and uh, we hired him at Newton, and he was able to be assistant coach. And Kyle Clare came back, and he was assistant coach, and uh, that was had some stability. You know, they were there for five, six years, and that that made a big difference as far as having those guys there to help out. And then, of course, when we finished, um, I had. Uh, you know, Troy came back and was able to help us a little bit of a volunteer basis, and uh, that you know he could see the writing on the wall that I was going to be gone, and and I thought that he would be fantastic to come back, and and he you knew the way he worked with this with the younger groups and the intensity and the the uh, you know his experience from T Town that we came with that was he was going to be a very good head coach so. Uh, those were guys that I really enjoyed coaching with. If you wouldn't have coached and taught, what would you have done instead? Mm -hmm. Well, I uh, I wouldn't have been a dairy farmer. I know that for sure. <laughs> <laughs> I grew up doing that, and uh, I remember that uh, farming. My you know dad farmed and didn't want to. He said, "I don't want to have a job where I have to worry about weather." And then when I went into uh, being the AD, all I did was think about weather. So I, I don't know if I gained anything. 
I, I really think I would have probably been in some type of sale position, um, you know, my son's sales and different things. I think the competition is still type of, you know, you listen to those guys, they're still uh, still competing for sales, competing for that. So it seems like competition is kind of in me, and so I probably would have been doing something like that. What do you think, as a former coach, is the current status for the Newton basketball program? Mm -hmm. Well, I, I look, I think the program is on the way up. I really do. I think the, uh, with Troy being there, uh, a former player, uh, with with the type of player that he was, I knew that coming in that he'd be a great coach. Uh, he gets people out, you know. And, and and Newton, you have to learn to work with other sports. You have to learn to football. You have to be able to share athletes, and we do a great job at that. Our, uh, you know, Troy has been. And, and from the area, he knows what what it's like, and uh, so I, I I think we were very lucky that he came to Newton. I think we're very lucky to have him on our, as far as the head basketball coach, and uh, I'm, you know, I don't have any grandsons around here, but I would be more than happy to have my uh, son or grandson play for Troy Bremer. Who is your biggest role model? Well, obviously, growing up. Uh, from a, on a dairy farm and saw how my, my dad worked and my mom worked. Um, those two are the biggest influences in my life. Um, my dad was, uh, you know, somebody you could talk to, somebody you could work through problems with, somebody who supported you. Uh, I probably get a little of my competitors from my mother. She doesn't seem to lose very well. And uh, so those are, those are two people, obviously, that are very important. My Uncle John, who was... Uh, He's 15 years younger than my dad, and so he was almost like a brother to me growing up. And I, I remember, uh, you know, the biggest thing I wanted to do is beat him in basketball. You know, I played him one time. He let, I, if I scored one point, I'd win, and you know, I didn't score. So uh, I couldn't wait for the day that I could beat him. So that probably shaped me a little bit too. But uh, obviously, I was lucky enough to, uh, you know, have a wife that, you know, supported me and did a lot, allowed me to do. Uh, the sports I wanted to play, uh, coaching. A lot. Of, it's a lot of time away from the family, a lot of time away from everything else. Being the AD was a long time out, away from everybody, and she was here to do it and uh, to do everything and keep everybody together and be supportive. So uh, those people are important. Well, I, I got a lot of people. I think Coach Horst was probably a person that I need to thank a lot for allowing me to, you know, grow as a, as a person and coach and, and being a great friend. Um, Wendell Wheeler was very important to me as far as uh, allowing me to uh, get ready and, and of course, uh, be part of the basketball program. Um, then, then later on, the administration, I always had a lot of support in Newton. Uh, they were very nice to me, and, uh, and I enjoyed the time there. I had a great principal, Beth Preps was the you know, allowed me to go out and, you know, they set up a, the night I retired and that was, that was a very special night when all the former players came back. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, you see guys that came back from, uh, you know, different states and they showed up at the game and, and uh, you know, she was saying, hey, I'm sorry, because she knew I didn't really <laughs> want that. But that was, a, that was a great night. And then I got to see the players, you know, afterwards. So, those, I, I just want to thank all my former guys. I put them through a lot. Um, I get to hear from them every once in a while. I get it, you know, I'll get it. They, they have a lot of success in life. You know, I've got doctors, I've got lawyers, I've got, you know, the school teachers, administration. You know, Beth Preps was, was a, she was a, one of my students. So that is one of those things that uh, for coaching, you get to know those kids more. But then, you know, I, I taught a lot of years too. And it was, uh, the kids from Diedrich were great. And I, I, you know, they change a lot. I, I see them a lot of times in round and people, it's like, hey, Mr. Moser, and I'm like, hey, how you doing? I don't know, I don't remember. Because the fact that I, I, for some reason, I seem to not change, but they do. No, I just, it's a, it's one of those deals that uh, I have so many people out there that I'm supportive of, that, that were supported me, and um, I was very lucky. Your former Newton basketball coach, Hall of Fame softball player, mm -hmm. um, he retired back in 2018. Mm -hmm. And I look forward to speaking with him more in the future. Thank you for your time, Doug. Thanks, Tyler. I appreciate it very much.